Welcome to Aristotle Walks, where amazing philosophy papers are read aloud. The YouTube channel's aim is to make philosophy more accessible, specifically for those with vision impairments. Today, I will be reading one of the shortest and most influential papers from the past century. Is Justified True Belief, Knowledge? by Edmund Gettier from 1963. Here we go. Various attempts have been made in recent years to state necessary and sufficient conditions for someone's knowing a given proposition. The attempts have often been such that they can be stated in a form similar to the following. Definition A. Subject S knows that proposition P, if and only if, 1. P is true, 2. S believes that P, and 3. S is justified in believing that P. Footnote 1. Plato seems to be considering some such definition at Theotetus 201 and perhaps accepting one at Mino 98. For example, Roderick Chisholm has held that the following gives the necessary and sufficient conditions for knowledge. Definition B. S knows that P, if and only if, 1. S accepts P, 2. S has adequate evidence for P, and 3. P is true. A.J. Iyer has stated the necessary and sufficient conditions for knowledge as follows. Definition C. S knows that P, if and only if, 1. P is true, 2. S is sure that P is true, and 3. S has the right to be sure that P is true. I shall argue that definition A is false in that the conditions stated therein do not constitute a sufficient condition for the truth of the proposition that S knows that P. The same argument will show that definitions B and C fail if has adequate evidence for or has the right to be sure that is substituted for, is justified in believing that, throughout. I shall begin by noting two points. First, in that sense of justified in which S is being justified in believing P is a necessary condition of S's knowing that P, it is possible for a person to be justified in believing a proposition that is, in fact, false. Secondly, for any proposition P, if S is justified in believing P, and P entails Q, and S deduces Q from P and accepts Q as a result of this deduction, then... S is justified in believing Q. Keeping these two points in mind, I shall now present two cases in which the conditions stated in definition A are true for some proposition, though it is at the same time false that the person in question knows that proposition. Case 1. Suppose that Smith and Jones have applied for a certain job, and suppose that Smith has strong evidence for the following conjunctive proposition. Proposition D. Jones is the man who will get the job, and Jones has ten coins in his pocket. Smith's evidence for Proposition D might be that the president of the company assured him that Jones would in the end be selected and that he, Smith, has counted the coins in Jones's pocket ten minutes ago. Proposition D entails Proposition E. 
The man who will get the job has ten coins in his pocket. Let us suppose that Smith sees the entailment from Proposition D to Proposition E and accepts Proposition E on the grounds of D, for which he has strong evidence. In this case, Smith is clearly justified in believing that Proposition E is true. But imagine further that unknown to Smith, he himself, not Jones, will get the job. And also unknown to Smith, he himself has ten coins in his pocket. Proposition E is then true, though Proposition D, from which Smith inferred Proposition E, is false. In our example, then, all of the following are true. Proposition E is true, Smith believes that Proposition E is true, and Smith is justified in believing that Proposition E is true. But it is equally clear that Smith does not know that E is true. For Proposition E is true in virtue of the number of coins in Smith's pocket, while Smith does not know how many coins are in Smith's pocket and bases his belief in Proposition E on account of the coins in Jones's pocket, whom he falsely believes to be the man who will get the job. Case 2. Let us suppose that Smith has strong evidence for the following proposition. Proposition F. Jones owns a Ford. Smith's evidence might be that Jones has at all times in the past within Smith's memory owned a car and always a Ford, and that Jones has just offered Smith a ride while driving a Ford. Let us imagine now that Smith has another friend, Brown, of whose whereabouts he is totally ignorant. Smith selects three place names quite at random and constructs the following three propositions. Proposition G. Either Jones owns a Ford or Brown is in Boston. Proposition H. Either Jones owns a Ford or Brown is in Barcelona. Proposition I. Either Jones owns a Ford or Brown is in Brest-Litovsk. Each of these propositions is entailed by F. Imagine that Smith realizes the entailment of these propositions he has constructed by proposition F and proceeds to accept propositions G, H, and I on the basis of proposition F. Smith has correctly inferred propositions G, H, and I from a proposition for which he has strong evidence. Smith is therefore completely justified in believing each of these three propositions. Smith, of course, has no idea where Brown is. But imagine now that two further conditions hold. First, Jones does not own a Ford, but is at present driving a rented car. And secondly, by the sheerest coincidence and entirely unknown to Smith, the place mentioned in Proposition H happens really to be the place where Brown is. If these two conditions hold, then Smith does not know that H is true. Even though H is true, Smith does believe that H is true, and Smith is justified in believing that H is true. These two examples show that definition A does not state a sufficient condition for someone's knowing a given proposition. The same cases, with appropriate changes, will suffice to show that neither definition B nor definition C do so either. Edmund Gettier, who was born in 1927, is Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. 
this two and a half page paper from 1963 is basically his only and literally last paper he has published, but it has launched so much literature addressing what has become known as the Gettier problem and Gettier counterexamples or Gettier cases, which are counterexamples to the conception of knowledge as a justified true belief, which had been dominant at the time of the publication of this paper. This two-and-a-half-page paper has around 4,500 citations. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this great paper. The goal, the end, the telos of Aristotle walks is to make philosophy, in particular ancient, but also contemporary, more accessible. In creating this channel, I am thinking about serious students of philosophy who are auditory learners like me. I am thinking about people who are interested in philosophy, but reading dense papers is a bit too much. I hope that listening to them is something one can approach lightheartedly. I am thinking about students considering the study of philosophy or in the beginnings of their journey who do not know to which papers they should turn. Here, I will highlight the best papers, the most influential papers, the ones you should probably read first. To do this, I am getting help from my mentors and friends who are some of the leading scholars in the field of philosophy today. Finally, and most importantly, I am thinking about students with vision impairments. I think that it is a huge problem that many fields of work, including but actually particularly academia, is so inaccessible for students with disabilities. My aim is to make philosophy accessible. I hope to build Aristotle Walks into a helpful resource for a variety of learners. The YouTube channel Aristotle Walks is a counterpart and antistrophos to my original Instagram account, Aristotle Walks, where I post excerpts of Aristotle's works. I would appreciate it if you followed it and or subscribed to this channel. Thank you, and I hope you have a lovely day.